sell any corn yesterday? Was, they still have corn. Well, I just thought you, the way you were, you know, I was in a mad mission. I thought I would have stopped, but the, I thought you did this twirling of the corn thing really well. Got my attention. Thought someone was running out in front of the truck first. <laughs> well, well, good. He didn't. So did you guys grow the corn or? Really? Well, good for you. And it's sweet corn? It's not the kind they give the cows? It's definitely sweet corn. Well, good for you. <laughs> when business got slow, he was not going to go hungry. <laughs> well, good for you guys. Hey, if you guys want, to need, want or need some corn, there's still a little available. Um, hey, we didn't have... We didn't have an opportunity to get bulletins printed out, so she printed off one, and I'm going to be greedy with it. And uh, first of all, I just want to, uh, well, first of all, let's just have, a, okay, we're going to do Bible study um, on Wednesday, no, Tuesday morning, 9.30. We're going to go with that, perfect. And the kids, is going to come up to the house at 5.30? on Tuesday, and then music practices is, is, is at 7. And I think for right now, that's all we really got going, isn't it? I mean, poor Kimber's over here saying, yes, that's all we need to have going. <laughs> it's been pretty crazy. So uh, let's, let's remember those. Um, so the ladies at 9.30, the Bible study, and then, then music, and the kids come over to the house for, uh, for sign practice. Um, I want to, uh, Joel and put it in here. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, has anybody heard from Carl? Bobby, where's your wife? Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I haven't heard from Carl either. I need to just please keep, keep praying for Carl. I'm sure that he's in, his re in rehab. I mean, he's 90 years old and had a hip replaced. So uh, he's going to be there. He told me before we left, he says, man, I'm going to be there until I can go home and, and be okay by himself. So anyways, he's as tough as nails. Who knows? He might already be home. But, uh, okay, we want to keep praying for Carl. Um, Riley finally got a, an operation date. That's a plus. Well, what day was that happening? This Tuesday. This Tuesday. So the skins were played for the last time for about two weeks. Two, three weeks, that's what I figured. You're, you're, you're another tough one. Anyways, so be praying for Riley. Um, continue praying for Amy as, as her shoulder and stuff is healing. And, uh, and Diane, you're feeling better. You're here. Now George is in here, so you guys are just like shifting. And, and, and please be praying for J.D., Sandy Walker's husband, um, some, I think it, it sounded like this morning from talking to Sandy, good things are happening. The Lord is, the Lord is happening in, the, in that man's life. So whether he wants to believe it or not, please keep praying for Stan and Martha. I got a message from them. They're in Washington, I think, or somewhere helping a, grand, a grandchild move um, somewhere. And, uh, and Ed, you're, you're all healed up. Okay, you don't have any bruises today, so you must have behaved yourself. Um, but anyways, uh, keep praying for Ed that he can continue staying strong. And, uh, and there's tons, there's tons of prayer requests. Darren, I see that the bear attack kind of, you know what, Darren cut himself with a piece of paper. And listen, how can you go to Atlanta, Idaho and send back a report that the only injury we had was a paper cut to the eyeball? So we had to come up with something. Okay, we had to come up with something. I understand that Henry, he, when I put that on the deal, he thought I was plumb serious, didn't he? <laughs> well, I wanted everybody to come and hear about the bear attack. <coughs> oh, Darren's fine. 
Darren's fine. Darren, he's, he's about as tough as they come. Yeah, the bear wouldn't have been fine. Go over to, go over to Clayton's house, and you'll see it hanging on the wall. Um, yeah, so I don't know any other amount, announcements. We got tons of praises. I'm going to do things a little different this morning. Um, I know we have, we're going to have potluck immediately after church. Whether you brought something or not, doesn't matter. S- just please stick around. We're going to have pictures shown through the, through the deal. The little tiny kids will be able to go into the nursery, but everybody else, let's just stay out here. And, cause what I really want to do is just sh- share about the last week that we had on this trip and, um, and get everybody an opportunity. I think by far this was the best trip we've ever had to Atlanta, Idaho. Yeah, woohoo is right. I know that it sounds really silly, but normally we go there in the beginning of the summer, and there's just a handful of locals. But now all the people were there living in their in their summer homes or whatever, and so the town was full. It was fun. It was it was it was a, it was a good time. It, it was like I said, it was probably the, the the best one, the most productive one that we've that we've had. But before we get into that, is there any anniversaries today? This week, last week, no anniversaries. What do you got, buddy? You had one year anniversary. You've been tolerating him for a whole year. Well, praise God. Good for you. Well, happy anniversary. And I hope there's a gazillion more. How about, how about birthdays? Hey, you know what? About anniversaries. If you want to know how to have like 65 anniversaries, you know what, there's a whole bunch of people right in this room right now who would love to, sh- to show you and explain to you how to get to, to 60, 60, 60 year anniversary mark. So, but anyways, is there any birthdays? Yeah. Ooh, come on up. She's shy. She's shy. Come on, we won't bite. We had another birthday. Laurel, where's your, uh, where's your feller? He's not coming, that's fine. He, no, he doesn't have to come at all. No, 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 no. It's, it's, his birthday's not till when? It's not today. Oh, it was Tuesday. He was day seven. All right, well, we're going to sing happy birthday to him, even if he doesn't want, want us to. How you been, man? Every time I see you... I think I like this better. What happened? Your mom and dad need to stop feeding you. <laughs> you slow down a little. So, so you had a birthday. What, when is your birthday? August 9th. August 9th. So it's already come and gone. And so how old are you? Twelve. Twelve. That's the oldest you've ever been, man. I can see where you have to sit there and figure that out. Twelve. So hey, let me ask you this, real simple. What was the best thing that happened being 11 that you can remember? Helping your dad and your grandpa. What did you help your dad and grandpa do? Farming. Do farming. I mean, how, how many other 11-year-old girls are going to say, ooh, that was the highlight of my life is being, helping grandma, <laughs> grandpa and dad farm. Well, most kids are like, <laughs> anyways, well, good for you. Good for you. I bet you are a great help. Do you plan on kind of continuing on in that when you get older? Or yeah. you're going to be like a lawyer or something? No. Oh, good. There's, there's hope for you then. <clears throat> so, uh. You're 12. What, besides helping your grandpa, I mean, if you get to be too good of a hand, then uh, they will never let you go. So, but what else, <laughs> what else do you, uh, what else are you kind of looking forward to being 12? I mean, shoot, this is it. Pretty soon you'll be a teenager. This is the next one. Your grandma and grandpa are getting old. I don't really know. You don't know? <laughs> okay. You excited for school to start? No? Wow. What is, are you ready for school? No. <laughs> One kid. Who's ex- how many parents are excited for school to start? Woo! See, that's, uh, that's, that's what's important right now. Well, all right. Well, let's just sing happy birthday to you, young lady, for being 12. And, uh, God, I just, I just pray good things for you. You know, I pray that you, uh, that, you, that you just continue to be blessed and continue to learn how to be a farmer. We need it. The, the, someone on the Facebook said the other day that we need to thank a farmer because we eat. And as you can see, I've been eating a lot. 
So thanks, Dale. Thank you. Let's sing happy birthday. Thanks, Mike. Can you hear me now? Do I have to start all over? Oh, yes, Sarah's like, yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So the fifth Sunday envelope comes to, uh, for, our, for our kids. And so, and for those of you who don't know, you know, on the fifth Sundays, we just have a love offering. And it used to be, back in the old days, is how we used to keep the power and the heat on is we would have to have a fifth love, love off, uh, Sunday love offering. And that's where it would go to. But, man, the Lord has been so good that we haven't had to do that for a long time now. So now we find, find other things. And the youth is one. Suicide prevention is one. We, we, we really like to give money to the Boise Rescue Mission. And so those are just some of the things that it goes to. And uh, what, I, what I like to hear is, is uh, how the stories are when people be, be praying, when, they, when you do the deal. And at the end, it's amazing what the Lord will do. I mean, I've seen people who don't have, who gave a lot. And when you listen to their stories, it's like amazing. See, that's the God moment. Those are the things that we want to hang on to. And so it's not about my might or your might. It's about God's might. And I think that when it comes to this fifth Sunday love offering, totally want it to be, be, to be the Lord leading you and... Uh, and, and, what, and it, however he's leading you. Dude, he's practicing. He's practicing. He's going to be telling you all about it here pretty quick. All right. Well, let's just, let's just bow our heads real fast and let's, let's pray. And then, uh, and then we'll get on with, uh, with a little message today. Father God, I do thank you this morning for your, your grace, your mercy. I thank you for your son, and what uh, work he did on the cross so that we could have a rich relationship with you, so we could be in your presence, Father. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for picking us. Thank you for, for allowing me, somebody like me, to, to uh, represent you, to love your people, and to love the world, and to draw as many as we can to you. So, Father, just... Uh, Help us to recuperate. Help us to uh, um, understand that sometimes after we do good things in your name, that the, the devil shows up. Let's just help us to keep everything in perspective. And uh, to keep everything in perspective so that we can, um, you know, we just want to keep on keeping on. We just want to honor you yesterday, tomorrow, today. And we need, we need you in our lives to do that. So uh, I love you, Lord. I love these people. And uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. As I was saying, there's going to be a potluck afterwards. We're just going to keep the kids out here, Bobby. And uh, because what, what I really want to do today is we've been, we've been showing all these things. And, and uh, we normally don't do this. I mean, normally, we normally don't. Do we normally do this? I don't know. Not for the whole service. Well, some people might think I'm lazy. But you know, a whole week that we were gone... And, 
and I shared this with Sunday school for a half a second. Joellen, Joellen asked, I asked Joellen what the best part of the, of the trip was and, and what she would change and who were the best people that, that she met and stuff. And so she told me, and then she says, well, what about you? And you know, and I really, I took a while to, 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 uh, to think. There was one lady who stuck out, stood out more than anybody. And, you know, she looked like she was 110 years old. I'm not joking. It turns out she's really not that old. Just a good mountain life. But she carries a stick. And where, this, where, our, uh, where our lodge is at, where we stay, I mean, looking down, it don't look that bad. After the fourth time walking back up that thing, it looks like a mountain all by itself. But this lady, up and down that thing all day long, I just had a laugh because we, we landed up arriving, which we weren't planning, and they had Atlanta, Atlanta days. And I want to explain what Atlanta days is. is about 20 years ago, <clears throat> the, um, somebody got electrocuted. And by the time they were able to get help in, he had, he had already passed away. So they created Atlanta Days so they could raise money. Cause, so now they've got a helicopter pad in there. 25 minutes, they, you can, you'll have help. Which was, I mean, no matter which way you go in, driving into the place is not, you're hours away. It's 80 miles away from, from Boise, but it takes you five hours to go through those stupid, those stupid roads. So anyways... That's what Atlanta Day is about, and we just happened. We had no idea that it was going to be. So to me, that was a total God thing, man. The God, God is, uh, had, uh, it was just a God thing. We weren't, we weren't planning, planning that a bit. And so, but this lady, I says, well, how are you doing today, ma'am? And she says, well, it's Atlanta Hayes Days, and I'm feeling a little hazy today. Just a sweet, sweet lady. The whole place, the whole place was, uh, it was just full of people. I mean, it was just full of people, and I just couldn't, uh, couldn't have been happier. I love watching people. I love watching you people interact with people who we normally wouldn't probably interact with. And that's exactly what you did. Um, I don't know if they have a picture on there. We have, there's the girls, okay. We uh, volunteered. My wife, she was like a drill sergeant. Poof! She went and found, okay, how can we help in the land of days? And then she made a list. And they, they were glad to have help because uh, the people that were normally putting this on, they're not getting any younger. They can't, they can't do things quite like they used to. But Joellen, Joellen put a list together. She had, she had people moving ice. She had people setting up the tents. They had people cooking. And we did it all day. And, and then they had a, uh, gosh, they had a dunk tank. Where's Laurel? I have to tell this story, Laurel. This was Saturday. And I'm trying to get Glenn. I'm trying to get Glenn. Dude, man, you know how much money we could raise for this thing if you'd let him dunk you? And he's like, he wasn't going to have any part of it. No part of it. Bobby, he wasn't any fun. And then Laurel pops up. And she says, well, I'm going to go and get dunk. Let the kids dunk me. He's like, woohoo. And they did too, huh? There was a lot of the men in the group. A lot of the men in the group were up there. They wanted to throw a ball, but there was no way <laughs> that they were going to dunk a 70-plus-year-old woman in a dunk tank. But there was a whole bunch of kids. Like, yeah, hey, I got two bucks. Two bucks for three balls. And I don't know who the first one was, but he threw it and plonk, and she goes in. And it took us a minute to get her out. <laughs> she couldn't. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> but she got out. And then she thought she was going to get out. And the young fellow says, Hey, I, I paid for three balls. I've only thrown one. So she was a trooper. She got back in there. And once we figured out how to get back on the deal, she was a trooper. You were in there for, for quite a while. The chair helped. We had to put a chair in there so she could. It was funny. It was funny. People were gathering around anytime that you're laughing and and having fun like this, but thank you for doing that. I mean, that was, made me laugh. I was laugh still. You see the look on her eyes the first time she goes down. It's real. The water was nice and warm, wasn't it? Yeah. That had to be. You know, I just want to, uh, there's people who I want to thank. I don't know if this is the most appropriate time, but 
You know, I want to thank Joellen and Kimber and um, Margaret and Lisa Gray for getting the food. I know that Margaret and Lisa, they have never done this before, and Kimber and Joellen, you know, they just, when we take food up there, we always bring, on purpose, more food than we're going to eat. Because those people up there, some of those, one of those ladies hasn't been to town in three years. Okay, so, well, we love, I like to do it, and that was the, at, the, at the end of the, of the deal on Sunday, um, having people come and take the food. And there was a lot of food we gave away. And so, to, to me, I, I, I really want to thank, thank you girls for, for organizing that. There was cooks, at least Darren and Lisa, you guys cooked breakfast until Darren got attacked by the bear. Even after he got attacked, he made it a couple mornings. So, you know, we appreciate that. Margaret, we appreciate your help in the, in the deal. Eating, as you can see, I mean, we would eat all the time if we were allowed to. So having people do that is important on these things. And cooking for 31 people is not an easy, an easy task. But you guys did it. And um, so I appreciate that. I appreciate Joellen being able to see the situation and get everybody a job when it when it come time that's all we want to do when we go on these trips is we want to be a blessing to uh to the people that live there okay we we want to we want to uh we just want to be a blessing to them we want them to see jesus christ there's a huge history with that log home there okay or with that church and how it was built and who built it and the first pastors that were there who tried to to carry it on i mean and the history is really ugly um, as, as a lot of church seems to be kind of ugly. It turned ugly. And, uh, and so I was glad when we have an opportunity to go back and, and, and show a different face of what a Christian is, to be different. Um, you know, the, the only restaurant there is the bar. Now, they, they won't let the kids up on the bar, but the kids come into the place. And there's a lot of people that we've talked to who won't, let, who won't, who won't go there because it's a bar. They're afraid that alcohol is going to ruin them or something. You know, and, uh, and, I, and I respect and appreciate everybody's views, decisions. However, with alcohol, I really do. But you know what? Some, sometimes I think we need to, we needed to go in there and, 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 and let that lady, give that lady money. I don't know if I was self. So we needed to eat there. I just felt we need to eat there. We need, we need to contribute to the community. Because I think that's what Jesus would have done. I don't think because that they served a, a beer that Jesus would have said, nope, ain't going there. As a matter of fact, I remember a, a gentleman of mine way back in the day when he, he told me, he says, Dallas, he says, if, if Jesus was driving through Gillette, Wyoming, and it's 10 o'clock at night, and he gets a flat tire, where do you think he's going to go to get some help? I didn't know who Jesus was. Today, I would say he wouldn't need no help, man. He would poof, get it fixed. It's on the road. <laughs> but I said, I don't know, probably a church. And he disagreed. He said he would probably stop at that bar right there and go grab somebody to have him come out and help him fix the tire. And the more that I understand who Jesus Christ is and his mission on the, on, on the earth and the way he dealt with people, I kind of think he's probably right. He wasn't afraid of it. He's telling us over and over and over and over again, do not be afraid. To take heart. Okay? We don't need to be afraid. We talked, we talked a little bit about this today. How can Christians be filled with the love of Jesus Christ and then still have fear? That you can't. It's almost like saying, I'm going to put a dark and light into the same cup. What's going to happen? Every time you bring the light in, the dark's going to go away. Every time you bring the true, authentic love of Jesus Christ into anything, guess what? That fear should dissipate. We have nothing to be afraid of. Jesus, Jesus says, what, what can man do to you? What can man do to you? He can kill you. But Jesus says, I'm the one who has the power over your soul. See, I want to I I fear that one. I want to I have reverence to that one. And so often we, we run around with this exhausting fear that robs you of your joy it robs you of your witness it robs it just robs you fear starts so many so many little tentacles off of it come unforgiveness bitterness you name them you can go all day long and read them and it comes from being afraid 
And I'm not afraid of those people in Atlanta, Idaho. They should be afraid of me. Okay, they should, they should be afraid of us because what we're bringing is the truth. We're bringing, we're bringing the truth. And by bringing the truth, listen, we, uh, how we do that was cool. When we arrived, we finished taking down the old deck that had been removed, that had been up there for 30 years. The snow capped it in. We took it down. We got rid of all the, the nails of, this, of the salvageable lumber as they asked us to, stacked it up. Then the kids moved all, all the firewood to the front so it's under the awning so when it starts snowing, it'll be able to stay dry. Here's where I think was a huge thing. And when I, the letters and the stuff that I've gotten from the people in Atlanta since we've been home is that put back up about an 80-year-old slide next to the school that we painted a few years ago. We don't understand how big a deal that was to those people. They appreciated that. I mean, some of those people grew up there, you know, second, third generation, went to school there, went on the slide, and now everything's kind of getting back, you know. And, and, and I'm not going to tell you, I'll tell you, it, it was a God moment there because I went fishing, okay. I was told, go fishing. We got enough people to handle it. Then when I come back, the little story that was behind that thing, it was like, good thing I was fishing. Because we, we set the peacemaker and the workers. And, and, and it all worked out. And so they were blessed. They were blessed. Let's see. <coughs> here's, uh, here's the other one that Bobby and Doyle took. And listen, when I, when I first talked to Bobby and Doyle about going on an overnight camp with some kids... I sold this with about five or six kids. <coughs> well, they took 11. And I think all the way around, I can't get a, a, an accurate number, it was about eight miles all the way around trip. It was under 10 miles. Is that, is that pretty, pretty fair to say? It's about a quarter mile. <laughs> the quarter mile is, that's, and the kids, <laughs> I should tell that story. Every time the, Every time the kids would ask, oh, it's about a quarter mile. It's about a quarter mile. I'd have been asking too, guys, there's no doubt. And it wasn't fair to the kids because they, they came on a hike that we, that we tied a, uh, to their school backpacks, basically. Okay, you tied the sleeping bags on. I've seen that picture of Alex. Did Alex already go home? Yeah. <laughs> Doyle sent me a picture of Alex. <laughs> that one, yes! <laughs> Okay, they're not equipped to go into the woods. There's easier ways of doing it. Anyways, the kids went, and, uh, and I think Alex is the only one who said he probably wouldn't want to go back. <laughs> I like what Doyle said. We'll give him a few days, and he'll, he'll be fine. So anyways, that was a huge thing for me, for, for the two of the men in the church. One of them, who I know is a peacemaker, he has a calm head, and the other one who would fight a grizzly bear if need be, take your youth to go for an overnight deal. I knew that they were coming back. Okay, now I didn't know if all the kids would come back. <laughs> but I, but, you know, I knew that for the most part that those, those two would be back and bring back any evidence that we needed. And so thank you for doing it. And I think, from talking with Doyle and Bobby, I think they were blessed as much as the kids were blessed. In fact, we want to, as soon as we get back a few hours later, it's okay, next year we're going to do, I mean, already planning for the next one. And so I just, I just praise God and appreciate, appreciate that. Um, okay, let's see. We gave about, I don't know. Um, okay, we volunteered at the annual Atlanta Days, which we talked about. And it's a party that happens every year to help the EMT training and the fire search and rescue teams. That's where all the money goes. And I, am, I think a, a conservative money, monetary that was raised on those two days was, was well over $10,000. So that, that's huge. goes a long ways for what they, what they were wanting. And we handed out about, three, about 300 pounds of the first time some new faces in church on Sunday and we've even made a new contact with somebody who lives up there in the summertime now who's a gold miner who's got a gold mine on the river and he would be very disappointed if the next time we come if we don't 
bring our kids and to show him how he does it. And, it's, and I don't know how he's going to plan on it. He said he can get us to looking at it. But it's, uh, they put on scuba dive gear and wetsuits, the whole thing. And they go and dredge the bottom of the... Remember that hole that you guys jumped out of? That's how that thing was created. Is by, by one of those dredges. So they go hunt up gold. He says he doesn't ever get any, but it keeps him out of trouble with his wife. <clears throat> so they were very, very, very nice people. And there was lots of swimming um, and sitting in the hot springs along with fishing. I thought for, the, for years that the fishing, that was a secret. Because we would say, hey, where's all the great fishing spots? Because we would go in June and they're always saying, oh, the water's moving too fast. I'm telling Bobby and everybody, yeah, they just don't want us to go catching all their fish. That's all it is. Well, we come in August. The water's not moving very fast, and they were more than happy to tell me where to go get them. And they were there. Go get them. Go get them. So lots of fishing. Lots of, uh, man, somebody's mad. <laughs> he don't know if it's your kid or not. <laughs> he's, he's afraid to look in. Hmm. So, uh, <coughs> anyway, I think that we had a full week of God sightings all over the place. And so, does anybody want to take a minute and say hey and explain how the week went? John, do you want to say something? Or does anybody else have anything that they want to say? But before she does, listen, I know that not everybody went. Thank goodness not everybody went. That first day, you would have wanted me to turn around and take you back. Uh, because... We will not call ahead anymore and get instructions on the best way to get to Atlanta. We will, we will go the way, we will go the way that uh, we know. The shortcut was not that great a cut, man. I'm telling you, we ran a, we, I had that big old van pulling a trailer full of stuff down a goat trail. I am not joking. There was boulders in the road. That that thing was not designed to to go four wheeling. On that road, Darren's little Jeep, he went, he went great. Man, when we pulled up to the lodge, I thought we were going to catch the place on fire. There's smoke, everything's coming from the brakes. Absolutely no brakes whatsoever. We were, we're thinking, oh man, we got to get up. We're going to have to have someone bring up brakes. And, but it just needed to cool off and it was fine. But anyways, it was quite a deal. Anyways, go ahead, honey. Well, I just thought it was great. It's always great, like you said, to see people interact. But I loved how, like, we had 17 kids and 16 adults, I think. And just to see how every, all the adults loved on all the kids. I mean, I had three of my grand, five of my grandkids up there, and I didn't hardly see them all week long. They were always playing with the other kids, or Amy was taking them hiking, or they would go with Doyle. Doyle was taking them someplace. Darren and Lisa would take the kids. I mean... Our, our grandkids, all of everybody was loved on so much, and it was so cool to watch that. And um, then I think, too, like just the God timing, because we have tried for two or three years on purpose to get there for Atlanta Days and could never manage it. It was always on Labor Day. So for it to, for us to pull into town and see the big banner that said Atlanta Days this week, I mean... I just felt like God changed that just for us. <laughs> and I, and I, my concern was, I was really blessed by that because my concern was we did have new people on the trip and I was so worried that they were going to be disappointed with what small, small town missions looks like. And because like Darren and Lisa, you guys have been on the mission field. You have been out there in the big time stuff. And to go to Atlanta, <laughs> I know, after that... Oh my gosh, I was so worried they were going to be disappointed. But, um, but they, came, they went hiking the first night and came back and said, we just met Sandy, and we just, you know, and they had great stories to tell just a few days that they were there. And so to be able to um, have that happen and give us more opportunities, because we had only thought we were going to get to work on the deck. And I thought, gosh, I always like to be, I like to do something for the community, and I, I, I love that we get to do stuff for the church as well, but really wanted to do that. So it gave us time to still put in the slide and work Atlanta Days, and I just thought the timing of everything was perfect, and I, it was a blessing. It was huge. It was just a blessing. Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else want to? Perfect. 
perfect. Could have asked for better weather. Ask the hikers. <laughs> it was perfect. It hailed the day they were leaving. Eh, just, just for a minute, though. <laughs> That's fun. Did you have a good time, Clayton? Good. Hey, was it you that pulled all these weeds around here? Well, you guys are you guys are a blessing beyond I have one more thing to say. anything <laughs> we can say. Go ahead. When I was assigning tasks to everybody, I really had to build Raya up because I had asked her to work in the kitchen tent, and she had never done that. I didn't know she had never done that before, and she was like flipping burgers like she was a pro. Flames going up. I mean, she <laughs> I, I put her in there, and I, she said later that she had never done anything like that, so people really got out of their comfort zone. Brittany, I wish Brittany was here today. That little girl, I assigned her to be the runner, and she was <laughs> literally running most of the day. Yes, up and down the mountain, and <coughs> she was on ice duty, and she just um, and she 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 was down there almost the entire day. I think she took a one hour break to go take a nap in the middle of it, and then the people that were doing the auction, their cashier didn't show up, and so they asked her, "Would you be willing?" So she was down there basically from 10 o'clock until 8.30 that night. And so she was an amazing, amazing help with that. You know, in the church, we invite you to come to our Sunday school classes. We're going to get ready here in a few weeks to start up our, uh, you know, the fall uh, um, um, home groups, small groups, whatever we want to call them, again. Okay, we, we prepare our children in these rooms, we sing the songs, we do all these things. And I think that it's sometimes we can, get, we can get in a rut. We can think that, okay, I'm doing it. But you know, what, what I've discovered and what I want to encourage everybody is when we come to these things, and I want you to come. I want you to come and grow. Adrian Rogers had a great message this morning about, about immature Christians, about how, how sometimes... We need to sit back and ask ourselves honestly, hey, are you we better today? Am I closer to the Lord today? Is my relationship deeper today than it was a year ago? And if not, then we need to do some examining. Listen, I really believe that all the things the Lord has us do to preparing is for a church to become a mission-minded church. The churches who sit at home and worry about their own stuff land up devouring one another and they die. I think that when we can get out and be a blessing to other people, God is going to bless you no matter what. No matter how we want to look at it, He is going to bless you. I think that's the true mission of the church is to get out and not only tell people about Jesus Christ, but show people what it looks like to follow Jesus Christ. And that is with our, with our words, our actions, our deeds. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not encouraging anybody to thinking that you're going to work your way to heaven. Okay, if you've got Jesus in your heart, you're already going to heaven. So now what we need to be doing is in Jude, it says to be swiping other people out from the, uh, of, a, of the fire on our way to heaven, right? And so we can't do that sitting here. we got to do that by going out. And my heart and prayer is, is that we get more opportunities to, to, uh, to go to Atlanta or wherever else the Lord might be calling and listen it takes all of us like i said the last time i was here it takes all of us we need people at home praying we need people at home paying we need people at home listen the people at home hey when we were going down that mountain i was definitely thanking the good lord that we had people at home praying because it was it was pretty sketchy at a time or two especially when you roll in with no breaks uh, like, whoa, that could have turned out way different. Darren, he kept trying to get ahead of me, but, but no brakes, man. I just kept coming down. I was a lot heavier than him, man. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. So, but we needed you guys here praying. We needed you guys here um, holding down, down the fort. I understand that, the, that we had the, the, the um, Randy Jackson came and preached a good message. And uh, that's what we need. We, it takes everybody. So please, when we have a, a church mission like this, and whether you can't go or you don't, whatever the deal may be, listen, you have a role in this. You have a role. 
I walked away feeling that like it was a success. And I have every intention to come in here and tell them the good people of San Hollow Baptist Church, we were successful. We, not me and Joe Allen, not just the people who went, all of us were successful at doing this. And, 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 I can, and the reason why I say this is um, I get this, this message, and I just want to read the one message for you guys. It's all put in a bunch, but it says, it says, thank you for your email and for the details. I will share it with the board. It warms my heart. They really appreciated the chairs. You know what a pain in the backside it is to haul up 25 chairs? It would have been easier if we'd hold, been able to fill the whole thing. Hey, 25 chairs. It says, listen to what they said. Listen, it says, I believe Atlanta has met Jesus at Atlanta Days through you and your church um, just by being present and serving where needed. Putting up the slide, it was a big deal for the locals. Thank you for, for working on Rick Sh um, Shell's list. The, the, the icing on the cake is that you made great memories and people experienced the mountains for the first time listen that's my that's when i knew we were successful i believe because people seen jesus through you through you through your words your actions your deeds that's what we go there for okay it, we didn't go there just so we could go hiking listen if we would have said "Woo, everybody we're going to go to atlanta to go on a two-day hiking trip we'd have probably had five people right but listen we went because we, we want to be a blessing. We want to be a blessing so we can be blessing. Listen, one thing that I want to leave this, this morning, and then the wife and I are going to take our two grandkids who've been up here for like ever. <laughs> yeah, he knows exactly how many days it's been. 45. Anyways, we're going to take them back to Yakima straight away. So we're not going to be able to join you for, for lunch. But please stay talk, share, reminisce, explain, I mean, ask questions about the trip, ask Laurel. Listen, everybody had a part. Everybody was doing something. Whether it was Julian, not going to go on a hike, not going to go on a hike, to the day before the hike, I got to go on the hike. <laughs> to, to the kids, maybe never jumping off a rock into the river. I would have never done it until I watched somebody else do it. And then I still didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably won't. Anyways, listen. What I want us to be doing and preparing our hearts for is this. Church, we need to be a mission-minded church. Whether the mission's right here at home. And that's where it all begins. It begins in your home. Okay, it begins in our, in our communities. And then out to the rest of the world. Um, you know, in, in Psalms 96, in verse 3, it tells us, Declare His glory among the nations, His wondrous work among all people. All people. That's, that's what the, the psalmist wrote. I believe that's what we're, our, our mission should be. That's what we need to be about. Is going out and not telling people how horrible our churches are, and how horrible the rest of the world is. The world's doing just what they're supposed to be doing. We need to be doing what we're supposed to be doing. And that's going out and telling people. Showing people. Loving people. We are commanded to love people. And the more that we work on that, the more we understand how hard that is. And, uh, and yet how, how important it is at the same time. So thank you guys for making... For making... Uh, 2021 Atlanta trip for me the memories that it was and uh, I just praise God for every one of you and uh, and let's uh, let's get equipped to go do it again and then again and then again bow your heads please Father God we do thank you again for just the means we thank you for all the people that help help pay for this trip we thank you for getting us there safely and getting us home we thank you lord for all the firsts that happen um in individuals lives and all these little things lord are, are little things that you've used to draw people closer to you uh have people lean on you more and more thank you for allowing us to see this happen thank you for the people in Atlanta, father the the people that live there all year and even the the summertime people, we just, we just pray blessings on, on them. 
And we ask, Father, that you would, uh, that you would continue to move in the hearts and in the minds of those that are there. Uh, and, and, Father, just draw them near to you. Just draw them near to you. Um, Lord, I love you. I love your people. Um, you know, Father, the, having a, being a mission-minded church takes the people in the church sometimes to change their hearts and their views of things. And if that's what's needed here, Father, I pray that you would do that work in my life, in Joellen's life, in the, peop- in the, in the life of the people here. We just want to be obedient to you, Lord. We want to reach the lost. We want to have a rich relationship with you, Father. And we know that we can't do that unless we have a rich relationship with other people. And unless we become a servant, somebody who has a heart to be a servant. And then, Lord, the the most important part is telling people about you. Showing people you. And uh, eh, that's, that's, that's how we have a relationship with you. And we just want to have the very best relationship that we can. So, as always, Lord, I pray that you would give your people here today an unquenchable um, thirst to be in your word and to be on their knees praying for, with, um, to you for, for their loved ones, for the world, for, uh, for the lost. And, uh, Father, just, uh, just bless them. Just bless them all for their faithfulness to you. I just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.